Okay, very good. Uh, thank you everyone for joining in on tonight's meeting. It's six o'clock. We do have a quorum, so I'm going to go ahead and start tonight's meeting. We'll begin with a roll call. First off, Karen Hall. Present. Ron Evans. Here. And Lee Schofield. I don't know if Tony's out there or not. Tony, are you with us? Uh, not yet, it sounds like. Uh, Danny Nielsen is excused. He's gone camping, and I'm uh, Tim Kurt. So, thank you, everyone that is here uh, with our board. I would ask that if anybody has a potential conflict of interest with anything on tonight's agenda, state for the record. There's nothing that you recognize at this time. If something comes up later, be sure and make that announcement at that time. Does anybody have any announcements that they'd like to make? Nothing there. Public comment. This is the opportunity for public to speak to the sewer authority, to the board. Does anybody in the Zoom world have anything as far as public comment? Please raise your hand. I see nothing. So we will move right along then to uh, old business. We have a consent agenda on it with two items, May 6th Budget Committee Summary Notes and May 8th Board Meeting Minutes. Does anybody on the board have any question or discussion on either of those two items? If not, we we'll entertain a motion. We make a motion we accept the consent agenda. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. On to new business. Officer elections. <laughs> Don't everybody raise your hand. What do we want to do here, folks? We want to continue on. We want to, anybody want to hold this? Anybody want this chair? <laughs> Does anybody want the chair? Like to not make Uh oh. Are you willing to serve as vice chair? Sure. I'll second that nomination. Are there any other nominations for vice chair? All in favor say aye. Opposed? That is simple. Ron, are you willing to continue your service? Does anybody want to try and arm wrestle it away from Ron? No. You certainly If that's the case, then uh, I would, uh, how should I say this? I'm nominated, but I guess nominate Ron to keep his position as. Second. And second. Then move and second. All in favor say aye. aye. Motion carries. I would like to nominate Mr. Hirsch to chair. JJ will stop. If he will stop. I'm not going anywhere this week, so <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't do that. Move and second. All in favor say aye. aye. Motion carries. That leaves uh, a nominate that is a secretary. I'll second that motion. I don't need a choice. Did anybody notice the railroad in here? <laughs> You're the one who wants that? You're in the middle of the seats. What's that matter? That's fine. Uh, <laughs> move and second it. All in favor say aye. Opposed? Motion carries. So, pretty much the same slate of officers with the addition. Vice chair. And we refer Denny as the communication. Oh, I nominate Denny as the communications chair. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. There we go. I think that's been the quickest, hasn't it, Warren? You're setting all kinds of records. 
Good. Uh, under new business, the Gates Connection Ordinance Update. Who would like to enlighten the rest of us on? The Gates City Council. Uh, the ordinance says there's not been approved, it just hasn't got a number of signing to it. Smoothly. Smoothly. It, 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 we have some comments from the public. Yeah. 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 We have one particular it's concerned a lot of people there. Generally, we also had people who understood the tax that we used to get $20 million bank transfers. We said we need to look at that side of it as well. So we had to look at the other side of it. Yes, is that uh, it will be required to up to read the letter and have the existing system. So there will be some conditions for labor in three cases for on lots to learn. Not right now, we will not have to, but they will. Uh, so they won't be required as they build. Yeah, before the bill, I think it would be a good deal to try to start the bill process. Okay. Um, if people do get a waiver, then that would then create change hands as far as ownership part of that. Mm -hmm. so, that's well, a, a yeah, we heard a lot of feedback on people not being able to afford it because it's. Mm -hmm. like, um, this is now going to be 12 acre lot out there for sale. Mm -hmm. Potentially need a subdivision and the retired members of the community that live up there. I mean, there is, ultimately, I mean, the Capitola Connect has doesn't change. And I know you have a lot of people excited about this. Yeah, we did. Lots of people. Mm -hmm. one, one thing that is different from mm -hmm. no city is. So it means the town system is so particular subject and subject on two. For now, it's going to be open up. I think they're going to be almost less expensive. So, uh, oh, when they're yeah. in the middle now. Yeah. One of the concerns is people are saying, a lot of them, there's a lot of people up there. Mark, we brand new. Biological said thirty thousand dollar systems, and they said, well, "What about this? You know, we have to spend thirty thousand dollars. You're going to get an inflation." So they yeah. had to talk in here about possibly reimbursing some people if they had recent expenditures. I, I cannot promise anything, but yeah. I think we can all look into programs that we. First, we might have something to say. Yes, Mr. Chair, I address more on that particular topic. In regards to anybody who had to put in the system as a result of the fire, we still have the residential safety program going, um, as well as a commercial, but that doesn't really impact uh, the gauge corridor. But um, anybody who's had to put in one of those one of those expensive systems and they take issue with it, we just we keep reminding them that, that they can get that fully reimbursed. And the reason for that was to relieve them of that cost as the sewers went in. Wow, cool. So if it was a result of the fire, it sounds like there is a program to address that. I remember hearing about it. I thought there was a deadline. Was that? Yeah. 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 Uh, I the government's coming, but it's still it's still on. Okay. Well, that's great. I think you guys were able to work it out. There's controversy with most everything, so it sounds like you guys did most of them. Uh, we do. We have agreed to what was the proportion of that for you guys are massaging for your side. We'll say if ours has to change, that will be a full that.
and we'll say this is the same one we do. Very good. Okay. Very good. Hopefully, it all is very simple. We've taken a look at that. Middle um, East construction delivery agreement update. It's all in deliver uh, deliberations right now. We have we've sat down and talked with the uh, Marion County about some stuff that we would like to see in the agreement, and I think Marion County's looking it over right now. Uh, I can't remember a list of anything in particular that we had in that, but just some stuff that we want to know that make sure that like a training program for the operators is going to be in there and what all this stuff in writing in the, the construction delivery agreement. Key elements like that that will make sure that going forward, we're not just handed the project and say, here you go, <laughs> run with it. So and things like uh, permits and stuff like that are going to be a key issue to the construction delivery agreement. So we'll be have to make sure that we all those things in place, or we know that they will be in place and transferable and close to things. Uh, we don't have a document yet. It's all just in negotiations right now with Marion County on construction delivery. So really, all I have on that, I see uh, Peter's in the room, Peter Keller, we met with Keller and Associates, and and uh, some folks from Marion County to talk about design and stuff like that. So the treatment plan, everything from the buildings and the construction elements are going to be hopefully to keep costs down and the uh, functionality optimal. So those are the things are going to be an ongoing, ongoing discussions. Uh, anyway, any questions on any of that? I don't know that I have any answers. Questions. <laughs> if not, uh, move to creditors report. Okay. Last month, we did receive a invoice from David Houston. It is Nine thousand, nine thousand, ten thousand dollars to be produced. And unfortunately, we got, I didn't get the calls and voice from me. And we feel like we had that value. Out of ten, it was a few hundred and seventy-seven dollars. So with that, I mean, it's basically our control spend. One thing I did notice is that our Houston leaders began thousand twenty dollars on them, so we, we have basically up to eighty thousand dollars to support them, so we have about ten thousand dollars to support Cable Houston. And we're, we're hoping for the the ad we're asking for the next group of money. So, when 95 or whatever turns out to be, will support the fall on the continuance so we can get all the We still need to finish the agreement, but we still need to get a temporary inner city agreements on that. We still need to get the very candid deliverable temporary agreements. There's a lot of work to do. Okay. Questions for Ron on the Treasury Board? Staff report, Laura, your opportunity to shine. Um, good afternoon. I'm going to pause just for logistics. How's our sound sound? Um, Stephen said he's having a hard time hearing when Juan speaks. Just, yeah. 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 Well, I hear the big stick. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'll go ahead and proceed with the 
with the report, um, for those listening in um, on the previous item, Mr. Evans was uh, walking us through the report, which is in the back and um, was provided today and will be posted after this meeting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as you know, Tom and your staff has primarily been assisting you uh, through the budget process. Here today in a duly posted meeting, uh, you did adopt your 24 25 budget. Um, so, congratulations, and you are through that process. Um, we are also continuing to support the efforts that uh, Milwaukee and the county are undergoing, as Chair Hirsch mentioned a minute ago. Um, for the construction delivery agreement, uh, playing the host and senior role uh, and coordinator role with you. Just on that. Um, lastly, we uh, are continuing to work with the county and interested parties, um, including uh, downstream communities, on a regulatory pathway for the prevailing rule amendment. Um, those uh, conversations are going well, they're happening at the technical staff level at this time. Um, COG is in coordination with the county of preparing a communications toolkit, if you will, that will be presented to all of you and any other interested parties that explain um, the three basin rule petition uh, proposal that is not yet, petition isn't yet filed, but as the county will tell you, but it, um, language is being discussed. And so the toolkit will include frequently asked questions about what is the three basin rule. Uh, why is now a good time to update it? The short answer is the Supreme Court's decision in Maui um, is causing a federal uh, law change. And because the free basin rule is connected to that, they sort of go um, part and parcel. Um, frequently asked questions, um, example, um, letters of support that and testimony of support that your uh, you as elected officials and that your bodies should adopt um, when requested. Um, we're not quite there yet, but um, the county will uh, let you know about that, but that is being prepared for you. Um, and then lastly, we're continuing to meet with um, just county staff, Business Oregon, Regional Dilution Teams Coordinator uh, regarding all the funding sources and keeping our ear to the ground um, to make sure that when and if there's an opportunity for this body to support a funding request, you we are act swiftly and promptly um, to 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 do that um, because we all know that the project can could use a little extra funding um, for the Mill City gates and then obviously still for the Upper Canyon. Um, I did prepare uh, with um, our finance director a supplemental staff report. Um, talked with the chair, which I sent out earlier today. Talked with the chair earlier. I'd like to go ahead and um, hold that till the end and let the county um, and our partners provide any updates. Uh, and then we this afternoon again. But I'll take questions on his part. Any questions for Laura on any of this from the board? Anybody out in Zoom line have any questions for Laura? I don't see any. Okay. okay. I don't see any questions. We're good. We're good. Thank you. Uh, then we'll move right along. We'll go to our campaign update. You mean this could pull up your your presentation? I see. Yes. I'm going to go first, and then I'll go back. Pull up the morning for me. Yes. That's great. Like the speaker. So they can hear you. So just got to project into the owl. the owl there, basically. So we'll see the hot seat then. Or you can yeah. over here. No, that never works. We'll do better on this. Or at least one. I think it should be done. Yeah. We know you can see that. There you go. We have the official hot seat. Uh, yeah, so uh, afternoon. First, I'll, mention, I'll just go through. We've, we've uh, brought several people with me. I know you've met them both before. Um, so first, Ms. Seagay. Uh, she's an engineer that joined the county to help us on the project. So, um, between myself, Brian, and Steve, we have three engineers on the on the project on the owner side. So we're very glad to have her, and uh, that we bring in a well of technical expertise through our consultants Keller and their subs as well. So Peter Olson has come back to give us a comprehensive project update. 
while you haven't seen him much in, in the last few meetings, they have been working very hard and we'll talk through everything that they're doing. Uh, so before I, I turn it to Peter, I'll just give a brief update on some of the counties that work to date. Uh, as, as Laura mentioned, we've been uh, all kind of working uh, through this process of permitting and dealing with that uh, apparent tension between federal and state rules on how we would permit this. So there's not any specific asks at this point. It's still in, in process, kind of still being baked. But um, the the intent is to, you know, try to find a, a permitting process that will work not only for the proposed Mill City Gate system, but for Detroit and Dan as well. Uh, I, I noted on there, it's not just a cover all business that the Gates Connection Ordinance. So we observed that as well and are uh, very happy to see that. We'll be incorporating that to the project. Uh, Detroit Commercial Septic Update. Uh, there has been a great deal of outreach in the last month. And uh, consequently, a lot of calls on my phone now, which is great. So um, we're, we're starting to get hold of some additional uh, property owners that we hadn't reached before because of, uh, you know, we're building our, our contacts. So we've had a few more people apply. We will be changing consultants as Brandon is getting ready to retire and uh, his protege will be taking the reins. So we're going to try to time those new applicants with the new consultant to take over. And then those ones that Brandon's been working on, our plan is to get all of those in for permits under review before he turns things over so we have a clean break. And then all of the ones he's been working with for the past uh, six months or so, our plan is to get them all permitted and ready to start shopping around for contractors. So some of those ones that are critical to Detroit, like the um, kind of centered around that downtown corridor, um, and and a couple streets back, all of those, that central commercial core, we should have a good number of those going in for contracts in the next couple months. So those owners, and I know that uh, we don't have Detroit representation here tonight, but just so that the board's aware, uh, those, uh, those owners following the grant program will go out and obtain their own contractors of their choice to come in and do the work, and then we will cut them a check so that it ends up costing them nothing. Uh, the con consulting has been provided. We've provided survey in the cases where they needed it. We've gone out and done excavation and running cameras down lines, uh, any inspections that were needed as part of that design, given them a, a uh, septic design process. Sorry, a septic design and taken them through the permitting process. And we'll take care of the construction cost when it's done. So, um, we're hoping to have a number of new functioning septic systems in Detroit. So these are going to be individual septic systems on one particular? Correct. Um, yes, each one will be individual. There are a couple of cases where they people have multiple lots, so we're simply combining the lots to make it work. It's the easiest permanent route. Okay. Uh, funding update. So uh, to date, we've continued to kind of amalgamate all of these different funds where we can find them. You'll note that we have we show a total of 10.2 million in what we call kind of uh, largely committed funds where it's, it's more than just a handshake. We've actually talked with agencies about how we can put those funds together. So that's our, that's our total amount that we've added to that initial uh, $50 million grant. So those are, and right now they're in some sort of process of us just writing out the agreements, um, but that's, those are, we are confident enough in those to put them pen to paper and say, we'll get this. So that brings our funding gap down a little bit more. We still acknowledge there's a substantial funding gap we're working on, but some of those smaller pots of money are faster, easier to, to get hold of. Sometimes the larger ask when we're going after 10 million or 20 million, from one source takes a little bit longer. So uh, if you recall about three months ago, we told this board that we'll be going after multiple different avenues to try to close it. So this is the start of it. So what about the property you think possibly that the property now? Right. Uh, it's around 26 million. We'll so, projecting. Okay. Yeah. All subject to change depending okay. on the, um, the design process, of course. 
So we'll still be getting real-time estimates as we go through the design process. Perfect. Yes, thank you. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention before I turn the field over to Keller is uh, all the work in City of Gates right now. We are going all out with surveying and uh, the, some of the pre-design work that Keller's been doing. So I'll just I'll just pay, take a beat to mention. Um, we've had two types of interactions. One has been with our surveyors, and another was what we call utility locators, which is not part of our project, but it's required by law to call them in. The surveyors are pretty familiar with the project, know what's happening, and have contact info. I cannot get any of that out to locators. So I think some citizens have approached and might not be sure who they're talking to and talk to locators. And a utility locator works for the gas company or the city or the power mm -hmm. company. And they said, oh, they, as usual, they don't know much about the project, so they don't comment. Um, don't be surprised if people approach them and they don't know much about it because they'll take on, you know, they'll have 30 or 40 projects in their backlog. The surveyors have my contact info and they give that out to any citizens who have questions. We've heard feedback about the physical downtown. People walking through the uh, unannounced. So that's good information. So the survey, I mean, the locators themselves are also have a very small distance they can go outside right away. But mostly they're actually in right away. And what we see is very common is people have their property up against a uh, road that's been 20 feet wide for as long as they can remember. And nobody really knows that it's actually an 80 foot right away. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what happened there, but this is very common in our line of work. I think that's sort of the situation with this amount of right of these fairly extended past where the road is, so they can be in the right of way people think they're in their own the situation there. It happens all the time with locators and uh you know, let's try to we try to smooth over the edges, but sometimes it's, it's going to happen. Um, we're still doing more surveying in Gates. I think now we're starting to survey those private rows after notice has been posted. Uh, surveyors actually reported some very good interactions, and they said some people gave them some uh, thumbs up or something about the project. They were happy to get the sewer. Nice. Pass the phone. Uh, so not much else to report. The, I'll let Peter talk about some aspects of the project ongoing. Um, but I'll pause real quick if there's any questions for the county. Questions from the board? Any questions out there in the Zoom world? Looks like you. Well, Peter, you're up. Well, thanks for having me. It's uh, been a little while, and uh, I always appreciate visiting and talking with the board. So, um, first of all, Chris has done a good job of explaining, you know, kind of some of the interactions at the gate, gates, and um, uh, so I appreciate that. I, I wouldn't even add anything else. So, um, what I would like to present on is just kind of update of the project. There's a couple of different focus points that we talk about, but uh, really you can think of the project. There's there's three projects in the big project right now as far as design is concerned. Um, and so we're looking at we have the treatment plant, that treatment facility, uh, which includes the disposal uh, and all the utilities that need to come onto the site there. We have the forest main that will take the uh, raw waste water from gates. We'll pump it and you know transmit it all the way to uh, the Mill City treatment plant, and then we have the City of Gates collection system. And the way we're dividing that up and conquering within our organization is we have kind of three different teams that are working on these different projects. And so you can imagine there's a lot, as as Chris said, there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of work happening uh, behind the scenes, which as a board, you're not seeing that day to day, but just know that there's a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of folks invested and, and working hard. So um, first slide here, subsurface exploration. So this is an important component for the disposal of the, uh, the treated and clean wastewater. Uh, when it's done, it'll be uh, disposed of and let it infiltrate into the ground. 
And GSI has done a, a great job of doing the investigations and drilling and test pits. And we've done a lot of investigation uh, so far. Uh, and what this does for us is a couple different things. It's, I'll explain what it is, 50 foot by 50 foot. So it's a larger scale. It's not just a test pit where we're doing a one ring infiltrometer test. Uh, it's a, a larger scale, uh, full scale, but it's a large scale. It lets them to do, there's going to be a, a wells drilled right in the middle of the, of the uh, test pit or the, sorry, the pilot test basin uh, that will let them measure the mound. So the mound you see above the groundwater there, um, it lets them measure that real time as it's happening. The other important thing is it's a, four, a minimum 14 day test. So they start um, uh, taking clean potable water uh, uh, into uh, the test, uh, pilot test area, and then it'll infiltrate and then they'll monitor for 14 days, depending on what the result, if it's, if it's um, stabilized and, it's, and they can measure it and they say it's not changing much. Uh, then they won't uh, continue on, but they may do a longer 28-day test. And so the, the scope of work that we have for them allows for them to do that. That allows them to put a higher level of confidence for the how long will this work. And so, it's, it, again, we're, we're lowering risk and, and, and uh, increasing confidence. Uh, one for not necessarily us, uh, I would say, but regulatory agency, so for the DEQ, uh, this will allow uh, us to be able to communicate to them with more specific data uh, that they're going to be looking for. So, um, yeah, any questions on that before we move on? Um, so if you see a, a fire hose out there and a lot of water, uh, I think it's pretty, I shouldn't say, but it's, it's more than you'd see in a regular, uh, you know, I'd say the ring infiltrometer is a small beat foot diameter basin, 50 feet by 50 feet. So it's, it, I'm interested to go watch and see what it looks like. So real quick question, so it didn't really want to fill up that because it will probably go into the ground as fast as you can pump it in. If it's overflowing, then we have, we have, we got a problem. Well, yeah, we need to take a, a deeper look, right? <laughs> The idea is to not have it overflow, right. but to yeah. get to uh, yeah. the whole lot. Yeah. yeah, that's my mistake, especially out there. Yeah. Okay. Um, sampling efforts is uh, so GSI has gone out and at the request of the DEQ and our further investigations uh, as for the permitting process, uh, we've gone out and tested, you know, sampled and tested for uh, nitrate. BOD, all these great things we can talk about and break those down if you want on what all those mean. I'm happy to do that, but really it's all the things that the DEQ is looking for, how uh, um, how well the water is going to be treated, what's there existing, so that when we put the treated effluent uh, into there, how's it going to react? It helps GSI with their models. So they will be able to get more detail and more robust model uh, so that the, the DEQ and, and other interested parties will be um, um, pleased to see that hopefully. You know, that's the idea, is to add more confidence again. Higher confidence, lower risk. Um, they tested also for PFAS. That's an item of concern for some of the interested parties uh, when you look at environmental uh, concerns and, and more specifically potable water intake uh, for other systems downstream. Um, so I don't have all the results from that. Uh, the PFAS, the Kind of the one more people are more interested in, uh, we don't have results yet. So we need real lives to complete those testing. Um, so more to come. Next, uh, there we go. So this figure is an older rendering. So don't get too locked in on this one, but uh, I'll show you the, the slide or two later. I'll show you the current layout for the uh, the, the property that we're looking at for the treatment site. Um, so the property acquisition efforts, they're, they are moving forward. An offer was made on the 30th of April in the 40 day, you know, review period. I think was the technical term, review period. Um, and so we're awaiting the counter offer um, and then to, to begin negotiation. So it's exciting to be moving forward and, and at these stages. Um, unfortunately, that's all I can tell you at this point. So, 
Uh, next one. All right, Mill City and Gates, both the preliminary site investigation activities. As I mentioned, there's a lot of activity happening, a lot of design, uh, but we're also still, the way that this project is compressed, timeline, uh, we're doing things a little out of um, the normal flow of work. I can do that. We're already doing design on the Gates collection system. We don't have survey yet. Um, so you can add, there's additional challenges, but in order to make it all work and keep with the fast pace, um, it's what we need to do. Um, and so we are getting the survey uh, was completed and then geotechnical uh, investigation for the WPCF treatment plant site. Those two have been completed, um, but the environmental due diligence is still in progress. So we're wetland delineation, you know, archaeological, those types of things. Uh, for Mill City Gates, Force Main, and the uh, collection system, all three of those are still in progress. Uh, so they're out there working on it. That's the communication. Those are the interactions that we were talking about. Um, I'm anxiously awaiting and, and excited to see all that come in and then kind of feed the design team uh, what they need to, to really make some significant progress. Um, but that was all stuff to come. Next one. So this is the treatment plant uh, design, which is, is more advanced than the Gates collection system and uh, force main currently, just as a, how the process is working with the permitting process. We need to be farther along. So they, they got started a lot earlier, certain components of the project. We are well along the preliminary engineering report. It says June, 2024, that's uh, now. So towards the end of this month, we're already communicating with the DEQ and we'll be submitting that engineering report, which is a significant milestone in the project to the DEQ and communicating with their staff. That kind of recent the Cox let them know it's coming. Um, we also have other communication we've had with uh, the DEQ more recently. It's it's the DEQ is just so you're aware, this much interaction with the DEQ is a good thing and they're they're, they're doing their part, I feel. Others may have different perspectives, but I feel as a state agency, they are very much a partner working with us as the design group and permitting group. So I, I, that's a good thing to report. I, I think it's a, it's a clear. Um, the pre procurement already started last month, looking at the SBR process space and, and the sand filters specifically. Um, that is still open until uh, the end of this week or next week. And so we're already looking at, you know, procuring those materials and, and moving forward with some early work amendments. With the CMDC contractors later, uh, they've, they've been great to work with. Uh, there's a lot of work happening there, a lot of interaction with the manufacturers and contractors. So, um, and what that means is we're sending out bids, or not a slate, but sending out bid packages and the manufacturers are saying, okay, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna do this and this is what it's gonna cost. And so this is again a very compact process uh and not typical. Uh, but uh, I think we got a, a good team that's making it possible. So um 30% design looking towards July 2024, you know, next month. You gotta remember that's next month. It's away. Um we're going to hit that on track. Uh, we use the terminology. We're, we've been calling GMP documents, but schedules have switched a little bit. Uh, so it's more of a 30% uh, and we're moving right on to 60% design, uh, which we'll, we're targeting for January. Just had some coordination and communication with design team just last week uh, and with you know some adjustments from funding agency aspects hasn't slowed us down and we're keeping the foot on the pedal to make sure we were doing everything we can to, to meet these very aggressive timelines. Um, 90% next last month, next year, if that makes any sense. Uh, starting construction, we, we said spring 2025, that depends, it depends on a lot of the parts and pieces and early work amendments. There's a lot of things that need to come together to make that happen. Um, that's the target. So this is the figure I was mentioning a slide or two ago. 
just to give you a little look at that, we had the six uh, rapid filtration basins uh, not on the lower elevation part of the site. If you're familiar uh, with that, that's kind of the, um, the gray break at the bend ground. Putting the treatment plant or siting that on the southern end, putting the new road at the 90 degree angle as opposed to coming straight across the site here. Um, so it's pretty exciting working on all the different components, a lot of discussions. We had a discussion last week, Mayor, you you're a part of that, of looking, uh, discussing architectural, what kind of, you know, um, building materials and, and things like that. So uh, we're getting into the nitty gritty uh, right about now. We're starting to get into that. So um, I think next slide. More. Sorry if I'm taking a little long. Uh, the Mill City Gates Force Main design. So this is uh, City of Gates here, as you're probably well aware. Uh, right at the, the Marion County Bridge that crosses the river. The Force Main, instead of in the master plan and, and facilities planning study process, you can come out the west side of town and go along the north side of the river. So that's we've done away with that uh, for a number of different reasons. Um, and just property acquisition and, and permitting and so on. Uh, we did an evaluation and, and compared that north and south route and came up with this route along uh, Gay School Road, Kingwood, and then connecting in over here with Fairview um, to the south end of the, of the property where the treatment plant is going to be. Uh, we've been working on that. We coordinated with the contractor to do that evaluation. We've been coordinating with Lynn County uh, and are not seeing major stumbling blocks and, and issues. Uh, there is a, a bridge at Rock Creek that will hang the, the pipe on instead of going underneath the creek. Uh, and we have a, a major culvert crossing at that location that we'll work with. Uh, we're anticipating the survey to let us know exactly how we're doing that. So there's still data to collect. Uh, but we have concepts, you know, on how to navigate that put together. And now we're waiting for the geotech and survey. So, I think next one, unless there's any questions. Um, this figure will look familiar from the facilities plan study. It hasn't changed a whole lot. We don't have a survey yet. But as I mentioned, uh, we've been evaluating uh, the identifying the areas that we're will require pressurized sewer lines. What that means is a grinder pump. So it's not a tank, it's a smaller, all it is is a pump, and it just pumps it out up to the gravity system. So those those are for properties, you know, such as here, where it's on the river, we can't gravity on out of that, you know, because those those homes and structures are down at the lower part of those, uh, lower elevation of those properties. So, We've, we've done an initial evaluation of all those. We think we have it honed in on which ones they're going to be, but the survey will, again, will uh, shed some more light on that and, uh, and help us to correct that if there's any errors. Where's the power going to come from to those pumps? It will come from the, uh, the home itself. And pay us? Am I going to pay you? <laughs> That's that's not, part of the that's part of the discussion that you know coming into a house and uh, and uh, lowering on the house and yeah and uh, not having redundancy in other words if that that house doesn't have a generator and yeah you're saying that that pump goes out yeah they need to not flush toilets. <laughs> <laughs> So there, there's some more discussion to be had on that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's that's part of the design that we can talk some more about yeah. when it when it comes to that point. We're aware. I'll say I'll let you know that. That's the answer I can give you is we're aware of that. Your, your central pump for that area there, there'd be a central pump for that pumping out of that. Uh, not this area. Yeah. They'll, they'll, have, they'll have they'll have individual grinder pumps out. <laughs> they'll all pump into one pipe and flex it out. Correct. Right. It's interesting. Yep. Uh, tried and true. It's proven and works works well. Um, 
these lift stations, there's three lift stations uh, located in Gates that will, they will have backup generators of, of their own. Because yeah. the original design had a lift pump in the tunnel and would drive down there and we get it out there. Yeah, we did look at that. And this this concept is is a uh, more, I want to say economical, more practical, that lift station for that small amount. So the be on that, on that loop. Correct. Correct. Um, we can talk more details about uh, possibilities and options of power, um, but I don't know that we don't want to dive into those details with this. So. <laughs> I have thoughts and ideas, so I'm yeah. happy to share that with you. Um, I think we talked about the ordinance a couple times already. Uh, next, next slide. Um, Chris provided a, a, an update on the commercial septic reimbursement program. We have a couple different, you know, statistics here uh, to share with you. Uh, the resource design is, is Brandon uh, has, has done an excellent job. He's he's the reason he's the professional when it comes to septic system design. Um, and the survey environmental due diligence is for the Odom anyway, along there as well to open up potential for some of those properties to have uh, some additional uh, square footage for their train fields. Uh, that's all still in the works. So, uh, next one. Uh, Detroit Canes Marina got a uh, design concept that has been put together. Uh, it's it's instead of being for a, having a larger wet well on the on the southern end over here uh, that might be able to work into the future um, collection system concept for Detroit. Uh, it, it's we pulled back from that concept and said we have two three thousand gallon tanks that will be located on the um, west end. Of the property and then a 1500 gallon tank on the east end due to the contours and how the flow would uh, work out. Each, uh, each spot would have its own connection, so its own clean out that the um, users could connect to. And the the marina itself and the you know how they operate that is, is going to be left up to them because that but if they're uh, connected 24 7 and, and discharging their, their wastewater. It just creates more pumping out that they're going to have to do for those tanks, and so that, that operation and how they're going to handle that is is something that we're they're going to have to take ownership of. Um, it's it's been a topic of discussion, obviously. So uh, we've got the initial cost estimate from the contractor. The county's reviewing that, and we're also getting the independent cost estimator uh, to review that. Uh, which is that independent cost estimator is a third party that will also be reviewing the uh, Gates and Mill City, you know, larger cost estimate that will be coming down the line in, in the future. So. Do you have any time frames on that? This? Yeah. We are need to get it built before the season starts a year from now, essentially. And so we have, we have <laughs> it is quick, but it's more time than we thought we had. <laughs> right. The tanks are going to be put in front of it. They clean out the tanks up front of the front of it. Yeah, they'll haul it, they'll pump it out, haul it. And, uh, you know, Mill City's new treatment plant could, could be receiving a uh, location for that. Any other questions? I think this is the last slide. Yeah, it is. So, if there's any other questions, happy to. Yeah. Just to echo something Peter said, I've been practice in other states. I can say that the level of interaction is important to get with the DEQ and other state agencies has been the other ones know that there has been a huge asset. Well, that is good because their cooperation and what gets their interaction with them is crucial on the trust. We all know that. So, what the, whatever they're able to do with you guys is certainly appreciated. 
I would still you get your all your own things. Let them let them know that if you bump into one of them. So <laughs> everybody likes to hear that. Yeah. Questions for Peter on anything from anybody? Question? Nothing. Nice. Wow. Uh, looking forward to we'll have future discussions of treasure funds. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I know that we have a little bit more on our agenda. If you so desire, uh, but I don't think there's going to be any real questions for you. It's all be for information. So, welcome to stay. We're going to move right along with another time here. Okay. Uh, Chair, I just realized that um, uh, this this is my mistake. Uh, I did not leave a place for a DQ or oh. to provide their um, update. And so I see that Mary is here. And so um, I apologize, uh, Terry. <laughs> I didn't get that on the issue. That's great. Yeah. Mary, do you have anything that you would like to share with us? Um, no, I'm just, uh, Chris Imo and I work and uh, work well together. And um, when Keller has questions, we try to be responsive and uh, give them feedback. Uh, we are looking forward to uh, having that pilot study done as, as Peter mentioned, it's, it's kind of a key component um, to give everybody confidence that the uh, infiltration basins will work and that um, there's time between when it gets into the groundwater and then, and then moves towards the river. Um, so yeah, so I think, you know, everybody's working hard and I think, you know, the pieces are coming together and, you know, this summer we're going to make some good progress and, um, I anticipate that we'll get the first water pollution control facility when that groundwater report's done. So sometime this summer, and then we'll start working on it. So, and we did go in front of the environmental commission on another project in, uh, Blue River, which is in the McKenzie, uh, another three basin um, project. And that was very successful. And now it's smaller, it's only 6,100 gallons um, per day, but, but still they didn't really have any questions that we couldn't respond to. So that that's a good sign. Um, Cause we'll be going in front of them for the water pollution control facility uh, permit when it's drafted and we've gone through a public process and then We'll then go in front of the commission to see if they concur with our recommendations. So that's kind of the process um, for that for that permit. There'll be other permits needed, but they are um, pretty straightforward. I, um, you know, they just need a 1,200 C construction permit from DQ. That doesn't take much time. And I haven't heard if we need any removal fill permits. I don't think we're impacting wetlands, but that that permit could take a little bit if we are impacting wetlands and have to go through that removal fill process. So. Are there any questions? Questions for these two? I don't think so, Mary. Just we appreciate the all the efforts that you guys are doing, the the way that you are working with Marion County and, and Keller, obviously, uh, to get this going, keeping it moving forward, weaving yeah. all these different things together so we can get the timeline down uh, is so crucial. So thank you very much for all your hard work. You're welcome. Is there anybody else out there that might have an update for us or anything they'd like to speak to? Oh, I don't see anybody. So with that, then Laura, if you'd like to yeah. present um, this. Yes, so uh, let's see. So what you have before you is the supplemental staff report um, that proposes to frame Amendment two to the IGA that NSA currently has in Henry Um And I'm, I'm going to turn it over to Amber in, in just a minute here. Amber is our finance director, and I needed her to help to pull something together. And so she's um, going to be presenting this. But going back in time a little bit, um, you'll recall um, about this time last year. We uh, were in conversation with Marion County Economic Development, so a different department than Public Works, 
um, about additional dollars this body would need to continue um, its work. Um, and at the time, we proposed an $80,000 um, figure for legal services and $195,000 for um, additional, just make continued continuity of service um, from the original 150 that this body received. Um, we have expended or nearly expended the $80,000 in legal services, and so it's an opportunity to revisit the 195 dollars um, that we talked about last, this time last year. Um, for budgeting purposes, the 195 dollars was included in your 24-25 budget. Um, last week, um, Finance uh, Executive Director Scott Dadson and our Community Development Director Norma Craig Carmichael and myself sat down and, and um, put our heads together about um, what, what does the business they need um, for the next fiscal year and perhaps even through the end of uh, 2025, the 2025 calendar year. Um, so in this cover memo, you'll see that the figure is not 195 at this point, it's almost 300, just over 300,000. Um, and that is uh, the result of some feedback that we've heard from you um, and just some cost estimates that we put together. So with that, I'll ask Amber to take it. Great, thank you, Laura. Um, in this proposal, you'll see, as Laura stated, the, the entire ask that we plan to offer for you to take to Marion County is $301,500. And that includes four critical changes. So um, it starts out with in the table that's in the middle of this report, if you're following along on paper, um, we're projecting $80,000 for project manager and support to that position. Um, one of the key changes is an operator uh, for $95,500. And as I hear from Laura, that position will become critical to get closer and closer to the delivery of a system that that person is training, onboarding, and offering feedback to the engineering team about anything that's, that's coming along the way. Um, and so that was added. Um, increasing legal services um, to $65,000 from the $30,000 that's in your current budget, and that's the anticipation of continued need for legal support. And then additional um, items are advocacy for funding and permitting. As you just heard from um, presentations today, there's still a need to seek more funding and advocate for the project um, to continue to inform the public and provide information all along the way, and that takes um, some resources, and then some additional physical support. Um, we anticipate with the additional spending that NSSA is doing, you're going to hit an, a threshold to need to have a financial audit, or at least a short review process, and that requires a little bit more support. We want to make sure that there is staffing support to your treasurer to ensure that we can provide all of the reports that we needed for that to go forward and to accommodate the additional funding if it comes in for all this project work that may in some in some cases pass through the board's um, oversight. So those are the four key changes. Then we're still maintaining the amount for dues and LMI and maintaining the contingency at $63,500 because that was based on your operating budget, your three months requirement, it's in your financial policies um, to go forward. And so as you go through this report, these are all outlined um, in more detail um, in, a, in a narrative format. Um, so I think I'll pause there and see if there are any questions. So I know that the, the operator wants to the significant asking us uh, the numbers on it. We don't know for sure yet uh, how we're going to do that. This is there just in case that's the road we go down. Yes, so that figure is an estimate that was developed off of some average costs that we've seen for operator positions um, advertised recently. We do some comparables in the region. Well, I should say not just Cogs region, but also um, Lynn County's region because of this, the way that this system is centralized across both areas. Um, the amount is truly an estimate. Right. Um, you don't know what you're going to get until you try to recruit and then you have some back and forth that usually takes place in that process. But the idea being that we understand the rate payers 
Um, the future rate payers don't currently have rates in order to generate revenue to generate the amount of money needed for an operator. Is it? This is part of the ask to Marion County is because we know that there isn't money just kind of sitting in someone's reserves waiting to right. Let them know that this is potential that could be coming. I see. Good on this. I think the time is going by fast, but this position probably wouldn't come online until closer to the early in 2026. I wouldn't think. I don't know how far, how fast we're moving with the project. And, so, and I well, think it's more than that this ask would cover not only through the end of the fiscal year, but may slide into the following fiscal year and carry over is because. Not all of the timelines are in concrete. Right. Well, that's in business right now. That's what makes it so whole thing more difficult. I want to say. Consider, consider later what you can do is come up with some organization that's going to manage that and make it somewhat. It's got someone has to. I've seen it go to numerous different ways so far. Whatever the entity. Right. Ends up being tasked with maintaining, maintaining the, the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. This, I would think that this would be used to start them, whether it be, I, I would say, operations and operator, because there's an infrastructure. Software, they have to get managing it, they have to get uh, maintenance people on board it from here. But, uh, it's, uh, I, Negatively, obviously, I'm just trying to wrap my head around yeah. all these things coming down those. Make sure we're ready to come. So, appreciate the looking into the future of this. We can ask and get everybody on board. So, for tonight, that's obviously a better deal for us. Okay. I was just curious about that uh, because we're going to turn around and it is going to be the spring. So, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Questions? 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 I appreciate the position with the time frame specifically. Well, that training and while they're doing the final work, the person can be involved and see what's going on too. Um, depending on how it is and who it is, I think that would be kind of an intimate part for mm -hmm. a brand new school. Okay. Any comments? April? Did you what want to add? I think, oh, I think that's 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 that we would propose for you to um, authorize Laura to present to Mary County on your behalf. Um, and Hope that they um, agree to this, and if not, if there's some negotiation, she can negotiate. I love it. We need it. I mean, just even if, if even as a contingency, so if for whatever reason, America, <laughs> and also even the lottery or Gates' lottery, um, we can just turn it back over. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, 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 Census will get it moving forward. Okay, I think we have something. 
motion that. Yeah. All right. Unless somebody else has something to add to tonight's agenda, I think we're uh, moving along nicely. And I appreciate everybody coming out. So no hands up out there in Zoom land. So we're going to go ahead and close tonight's meeting. Thank you everyone for coming out. I think you know, I need to add